off. guys well i'm back today with another shotgun review and this is a tactical semi-auto on a budget the g-force arms gf1 i was really pumped about this and i want to give a huge shout out to american pawn and gun located in monroe north carolina for sponsoring this video they sent this shotgun out to the channel for us to try out and i am really glad they did Every time they start carrying a new line of shotguns or firearms, a lot of times they'll ask my opinions, they're going to do their research, or they'll send one out to the channel for us to try out, so they understand what they're selling to make sure it's really good for their customers. Now, every time it comes to a budget shotgun, the question is always reliability and performance down at the range. Now, this one has a lot of nice features, and we'll talk about those front to back, as well as reliability down at the range, because it was a little bit squirrely at first with light loads, and a lot of times that can be expected with break-in periods, especially with budget, kind of Turkish-produced shotguns. Now, with that being said, every single Turkish shotgun I've ever shot after about 25 to 50 rounds breaks in incredibly smooth and runs reliably. This one, on the other hand, still had some challenges. We'll talk about that in the reliability section of this review. If you happen to be in Monroe, North Carolina, swing by American Pawn and Gun, tell them 704 Tactical sent you over, and they'll hook you up with some deals. They also recently restocked with ammunition. Unfortunately, they don't ship, but if you're in the area, swing by again, check them out. They've got a lot of guns and ammo still in stock. Now let's talk about the specs and features and performance of this GeForce GF1. 
Right off the bat, this one comes in at an affordable price point, and when I look them up online, it seems like they're selling anywhere from $350 to $399, but in fact, American Pawn and Gun actually has $329, I believe, on this shotgun, so a very great price, and honestly, uh, the cheapest I've seen this gun was at American Pawn and Gun, so if you can get out there, it's going to save yourself some money. Now, this one is interesting because of the barrel length. I believe it's right at about 20 inches long, so a little bit longer than the legal requirement when it comes to short barreled shotguns. So this is a hybrid between a hunting, maybe a skeet or trap shooting gun, just for fun, not really serious. Definitely a tactical defense shotgun, but this barrel length really spans the gamut of what you can do with a very versatile shotgun length. Now this one also has sort of a bead style front sight and it's threaded for chokes and it comes with three chokes in the box. This one's a cylinder bore choke. It's got some really nice texturing on the chokes and I absolutely love that about it. It's again, lending to the versatility of this shotgun. So I'm all really pumped, already really pumped about what this shotgun can do. Moving along to the fore end, you see some really nice texturing. Good spot for your hand groove right there. And right here, it's got a threaded end cap for disassembly. To disassemble this, you'll move this end cap. You'll slide everything off. You'll pull out the barrel. It's actually very simple. I've done it three or four times. Again, I'll talk about why I've done it three or four times in the reliability section of this review. Moving along to the receiver itself, it's actually very elegantly designed. The lines are very clean. I love what G-Force is doing with the branding. The trigger guard is nice, but it is polymer. The safety works really well. I do like the two-tone look and the slight texturing. The trigger is crisp and clean, so it functions great. And the bolt handle is very nice as well. And right up top, you have this slight cut for a rail, so you can start mounting some optics if you wanted to make this like a turkey gun or something like that. But this is a two and three quarter and three inch shell only style gun. Uh, so with that being said, though, you can still hunt with that, especially with a wide variety of chokes and the slightly longer than tactical length of that 18 and a half inch barrel. To load the gun, you simply pull this back, drop one in there, close the bolt on the chamber. You've got one in the tube and then you can go ahead at, or one in the pipe and you can load four in the tube, making this a four plus one or five round total shotgun. Again, uh, Pretty, pretty awesome. I would like to see an extended tube length. I never understood why shotguns like this, especially if they're jumping past that three round limit of hunting, never do the extended tube length all the way out to the end. I think a lot more people would buy it if they did something like that. Maybe it's a cost thing. Uh, maybe it's a reliability thing. I don't know, but they really should extend that tube. And I think that would become more of a tactical, a personal defense shotgun that still could be used for the same things as before. Now, with that being said, though, the tube loads fairly smooth. The loading gate does have a sharp edge. I caught my thumb on it a couple of times, but with proper loading techniques of dropping them in and pulling it straight down, you'll never have a problem. But I will probably polish and buff this out uh, and really smooth out some edges. That's the other thing. I may actually take that same polishing wheel to a lot of different edges on here because, again, you do have some sharper edges in and around this shotgun, but that tends to be the case with budget-style shotguns. I mean, you're getting a semi-auto shotgun with all these features for about $320 or $330. Expect some things like that. Now, when you're looking at the stock, they've done a very good job with the stock. They simply didn't throw in a plastic stock and leave it as that. They've got some really nice texturing on the tang, and then it's got a very nice rubber butt pad here, and then sort of a raised cheek piece to put your cheek on. And overall, it's very ergonomic. It points really well, it balances really well, and I like the way this feels. Now let's talk about the shootability and performance down at the range and the reliability where the rubber meets the road. And again, I want to give a huge shout out to American Pawn and Gun uh, because not only did they supply the shotgun, but they supplied some ammunition to go along with it for this review. Now, when it comes to just the overall shooting experience, this has some pretty stout recoil, more than other semi-autos I've shot in the past. I did some TriStar reviews, as well as uh, a few other TR Imports reviews with like their Silver Eagle line of shotguns. And their Silver Eagle line of shotguns, the Turkish-produced Silver Eagles, had a very smooth recoil impulse. It, it was like butter. It felt great on your shoulder, I mean, for a 12-gauge anyway, but this one seemed a little bit more violent. I'm not quite sure why, maybe it's overall size, the feel of it, but it definitely put a punch on your shoulder, even with birdshot. The punch was even stronger when I put buckshot, 
high brass turkey loads or hunting loads through it, pheasant loads, and then also one ounce slugs. I shot a number of one ounce slugs through this. Now, anything with high brass, the slugs, the high brass, uh, like number two shot, number four shot, and then all of the buckshot, it cycled beautifully. It threw the shells out probably about 10 to 15 feet in a nice pile. Some of the issues we started running in, which I expected, was birdshot. It definitely short-stroked on birdshot when I put it in. In fact, I posted a video to Instagram of it short-stroking every single time I pulled the trigger, and that is the worst I've ever seen a shotgun like that. That happened with Winchester loads and Federal loads, so it was very disheartening. It took about two boxes of shooting that and about 25 rounds of high brass shells, and for ammo prices being the way they are, that's a lot of money. A ton of slugs, a ton of buckshot just to break this in. In fact, I actually worked this charging handle maybe about three, 400 times with my hands. I've locked this back and let it sit for a while trying to break it in. And again, I took it out to the range one more time. Now, when we're looking at this shotgun, the first range trip was failure after failure, and the only thing that worked was high brass shells. The second range trip, uh, I could get one tube out of about six or seven times to run fully. Every other tube had a problem here and there, uh, but at that point, it was still cycling one or two. Then it was stove piping, so you could see it was breaking itself in. The third range trip, it did the same thing, and at this point, I'm maybe 150 rounds in, getting a little bit frustrated because this one is just not breaking in, and I don't have the money to keep spending on ammo. Plus, it didn't look like it was progressing any better. In fact, it almost looked like it was getting a little bit worse with stove pipes. So I disassembled it, I cleaned it, I lubed it, still the same issues. Then what I did was I clipped the coil off the recoil spring. I don't recommend you do this. Um, there's a reason why it is like it is, but I was getting so frustrated. Once I clipped that, just a single coil off, it started functioning really good with birdshot. Then I did run some more slugs through it. It functioned great. Now this might put more un, uh, undo wear and tear on the shotgun when you're running high brass loads, but me personally, I'm only running them every once in a while, and primarily I'm shooting birdshot, either to train or just to shoot things at the range or to scrap, trap shoot or skeet shoot. This is primarily a birdshot gun for me, so it's kind of pointless if it can't run any birdshot that I put through it. So after clipping off that coil, it runs really good now, and I can dump a birdshot through it. Every once in a while, you'll get a stove pipe with a lower powered load, and that's fine. Just pop it out and keep going. I'm not going to clip any more coals off. I imagine, too, if you clip a coal off that recoil spring, you are modifying the gun. It probably voids the warranty, but again, I don't care. I'm reviewing it. I'm trying things out. I'm experimenting so you guys don't have to, and I definitely uh, don't recommend you do this. Reach out to them. Call them. I did send them an email saying, hey, I'm having problems. What should I do? I haven't heard back yet. I'm not fussing at these guys. I mean, it was it was over the weekend and it was on like a, a Friday when I sent it. So I'm not too concerned that I haven't heard a response yet. I'm sure I'll get one um, early next week. And I will, guys, keep you updated with the performance of this shotgun. But it is something to consider. If you buy this gun and expect to shoot birdshot right out of the box, right off the gate, uh, you, you're going to be disappointed. It's not going to work. If you really want to primarily run a lot of birdshot through this or take it for trap shooting or skeet shooting or things like that, or even just to practice with it, I would definitely recommend you work it in, you break it in, plan on two, 300 rounds of a break-in period because I'm at, I was at 150 and it was not getting any better anytime soon. That's when I clipped that coal. Now, again, guys, I hope this gives you a ton of information about this shotgun. I really like it. I like the price. I like how it shoots. It's very accurate for a shotgun. Everything was lined up straight. The bead sight was welded on good. The wide variety of chokes, the handling, and the nimbleness of having a lighter weight shotgun like this is really awesome. It definitely was 100% reliable with high brass loads. And in fact, I would actually trust this for personal defense with high brass loads if this is all you could afford. And I mean, imagine, guys, coming down a hallway and then rattling off five shots of buckshot. That's, that's pretty powerful stuff and would stop most anybody in their tracks. So I think this is a formidable opponent. The only thing I would recommend, especially after reading their manual, is it definitely states it's a gas-operated shotgun that has a gas-regulating system that allows it to shoot pretty much anything. It says it will cycle whatever, but in reality, it is struggling cycling birdshot, so that is something to consider. 
Um, so I hope this gives you a lot of information and definitely check out American Pond and Gun located in Monroe, North Carolina for always supporting the channel and helping out the channel. You may run into me over there on my lunchtime. I like to head out there and see what they've got. Tell them 704 Tactical sent you over and they'll hook you up with a deal. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.